inside a, a hospital or an independent uh, outpatient clinic that uh, uh, provides such a, a specialized uh, care service. As well, uh, we introduce here the concept of continuity of care all along the life of the of the of the um, a, a patient, and this uh, um, uh, attention, this me medical control, is not not only provided at home or in the outpatient clinic, but outside home, in the home, in the work uh, uh, place, everywhere you are, including uh, gyms, including uh, uh, the the in-house uh, gym in your in your company or the uh, fitness centers nearby your, uh, your home, everywhere. And we introduce here in our model the, the, what is called the co-producers of health. The co-producers will be the organization that will participate in the care of patients, providing the special say. This is a uh, typical case of a, of a fitness center that may participate in the, in the uh, uh, long-term uh, care process. So finally, we want to, to to show this uh, uh, schema of uh, a, a business uh, a case that uh, has been implemented and is now uh, um, in, in progress in, in, in Valencia, in the hospital, a big hospital, the hospital uh, La Fe, uh, where the, we have identified the roles of providers, technology, and uh, service providers. So you see uh, software as a service, as a model of provision all the, the uh, hard cycle related uh, uh, software uh, 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 services. And uh, on top of this, it was necessary to provide other services that are not related to the technology, but are related to the implementation of the clinical case, which are, are, are logistics and, and, and delivery, which is not less important than the, than the others. And in the other side, what are the specific uh, uh, services uh, provided by the uh, care care um, organization. I think that just to, to present this for the discussion. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my presentation or my, my final talk will be dealing with the professional and the real roles and how the healthcare needs to be reorganized or needs to, to think differently in order that we can take profit of these tools and, and make them really useful. So this is the, the care loop as it has been described most of the time. Heart cycle originally also had this focus. So we have the second the primary loop in which the patient has to deal with his daily decisions and the secondary loop in, in, in which there is a much more intensive relation with the healthcare system. And most of the decisions should be brought to the primary loop because we want the patient to be at home, we want the patient to be healthy, we want the patient to take uh, control of his health. So here in the like typical uh, telemedicine or p-health uh, uh, schema, we have a, a strong role of the professional mainly as a healthcare provider, so taking uh, like the secondary loop decisions and also in providing, providing the evidence and providing the information needed for the analysis and for the system to really provide uh, solutions for the patients. But what we have found out, and is one of the conclusions we would say of the project half cycle, and I think is one of the key issues in the deployment of this type of solutions, is that we need to go even one step further. We need to include more things and we need to go, go a little bit ahead in order to really be able to, to have an impact. I took the wrong Okay, so originally the relationship was the patient to the professional and it was one direction, so we were receiving the information and the patient was quite a passive uh, um, actor, but we need to go ahead, okay, and th this is not longer a, a, a good solution as a standalone. Of course, we are not going to delete the relation patient-professional, but we need to create an ecosystem of care in which, we, in which we have different health professionals, professionals related to health, for example, nutrition, physical activity, physiotherapy, psychology, 
all these things, but we need also to have the patient, his family, his friends, other patients. We have the, the power of social networks, the power of social communities is very strong and can be very helpful if, if used correctly. So we have to include in our point of view, in our systems and in our models, all this ecosystem of people, all this ecosystem of services. And we have to move the focus from the curing, so just handling the curing the patient, to how we can really make him have a better life. And that includes other considerations, because what I want to do in my life is also important for me. It's not only that I'm healthy, of course that's very, very important, but also that I can live my life as much as possible as, as I want. So which are the challenges? What needs to be done or what we can do on this? We have to put a strong push, not only in creating this evidence that was mentioned before, but that that evidence at the end ends in a protocol or in a, uh, in a care pathway that can really arrive to the patient. And we have to include all these actors also in this protocol because for the moment most of the protocols, most, most of the care, ways, care pathways include medical professionals but there is not really a detailed role of how the patients can really be a part and be an active part of his health, how we can help uh, use the friends, how we can help uh, use the support of other peers, of other patients, of social actors and this has to be put in practice and apply, apply this evidence in, in a concrete way. Then we need also to include these new roles in the protocols and the, these new roles in the system and we have to enable care sharing because we need to move to be able to share the care of the patient between a lot of actors, keep trace of that, but also enable that we can have, I can have a nutritionist and a doctor and they are compatible and they are providing me with different services and all is part of, of my care and all is part of my life. So if we need really the continuum of care, we have to provide also solutions to this project. And then we, have, we are going to have a huge amounts of information. We are excellent in monitoring, we are capturing hundreds of data. You can see here there is a lot of solutions for capturing all types of possible data. But the problem is that has to lead to more decisions, especially in home care, especially in personal care outside the hospital. We need to change how we need to do something with that information, not just say, okay, this patient is going well, this patient is going bad. Because the, if we don't change the way we intervene, we are really reducing the impact and we are really not being so uh, optimizing so much uh, the technologies and the service and the effort we are putting. So we have to increase the focus on the intervention, on how to personalize and how to provide more concrete interventions. And finally, we are talking about technology, we are in a technology fair, so how, what is the role of technology? Of course, technology is a mean, is a channel to do the things. It's not that we have to start with technology, we have to start with the process, with the healthcare system, with the patient, the professional, and all this ecosystem, but technology can really help. It can provide more, mon um, better monitoring, which is more efficient and less intrusive, and that means we don't need always to have the very exact, absolutely perfect value. Maybe some values are fine for some things, So, but we need to, to make the person be living uh, easy. We have to enable communication and interoperability. No longer the one platform fits all, it's, it's the paradigm. We can see it in the mobile phones, we can see it in the way Facebook communicates with other um, applications. So we have to, to much move forward that, uh, that paradigm. We have to promote this cooperative care by providing support everywhere, anytime, to all the actors, and also uh, supporting this traceability, enabling that I can keep the trace who is doing what and which uh, way. And also we have to foster personalized intervention, that's very important, to really go to more efficient solutions, closer to the real needs of the patient, and that needs smarter decision support, focusing on personalization. So focusing on how can I make the life of the patient easier, how can I make with that more compliant the patient, how can I make my treatment more effective. We have also to include more productivity. That's important for healthcare managers. We need to have more sustainable healthcare system. We need to be able to plan in advance which resources are we going to need, how I can organize, how I can 
uh, face the challenges. We, and we need to include, include this strategic healthcare management in the decision. They are not only the ones who pay, they are also the ones who have to organize, to have to, to set up the objectives of the healthcare system. So it's no longer one single doctor handling the, the of course, the, the very clinical issues, he's going to be the, the leader. But on the rest, on how we can organize, how could we can better optimize the usage of the different kind of resources I can have, this uh, also deals with a strategic healthcare management. And of course, at the, at the end, we have to enhance the patient responsibility. This is a key word used a lot by the European Commission. That is a combination between responsibility and the capacity to really respond and to provide an answer. So we have to, do, to provide the right answer to the concrete patient in the moment he needs it. So it's not, if they tell me I have to do sports and I have to go swimming and I don't like swimming or I don't know how to swim, that doesn't make any difference to me. This is a very simple example but you can do a lot of things, you can do a lot of variations of a medical treatment that can be more um, easier to follow, or can fit better my life, and that's also a very important thing. And for that, we have to increase the personalization from one side to the other. And that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, everybody. And now we have a very short time for discussion, but before we start on this, from my point of view, are there any questions from the audience? Oh, please. Uh, Dr. Medvedev, Moscow. Uh, tell me, please, in such a multinational, international project, uh, do you use a joint database for patients or the, uh, the same uh, patient electronic, uh, electronic patient record systems? Uh, which language do you use? Your national uh, language or English? How you communicate within this? Or use like SNOMED uh, for semantic operability? I, I wonder how it's really organized on such level. And first of all, thank you very much for such nice presentation of your project. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Maybe I will start trying to answer your question. So, first of all, the uh, language all over is English. Every documentation is done in English. The communication towards the European Commission is in English. And about the databases, you asked in the beginning, of course we collect data and we try to do it in a structured way that the partners from a European project who, uh, who will support the tasks of analyzing data, of seeing what is in the data, of purifying data, that they can all have access and can use it in the right way. So this is a structured database that we use and we will share it uh, between the partners. If I, if I can add one thing, for the service that we are going to, to provide in the different pilots, we are having local instantiations of the system. This is due not for technology reasons, but for legal reasons. In the countries, they have not uh, supported databases being somewhere else than in the hospital and things like that. And we are having services also in the local language. But the system is unique, and, and we can like um, share the data for uh, investigation purposes. And we are following standards. We are using HL7. We are using Continuum Health Alliance. Everything we are standardizing. So as you have seen, we have technology in this, we have the medical world in this, we have uh, software, we have tools, and we have sensors in this. Now, the question that I think remains is, what are the obstacles for implementation? What, is, what are the challenges to really put this into real world and make a business and some real value for the customer, for the patient, for the individual patient out of it? Uh, okay. Um, what I said uh, that um, the big issue is really to uh, 